What's up? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, DNS All Day, and I'm here to do the raw review for February 27, 2023. I know I didn't do my last review, but I'm back on it for those who want to know the whole show and know how I felt about it. And the headline for the night was Becky Lynch and Lita capture WWE Women's Tag Team titles from Damage Control with help from Trish Stratus. And I ain't going to lie to y'all, man. I, this is, I, I pop for this, man. I'm sorry. I pop, man. I pop for Trish Stratus. I pop for Lita. I Becky did her damn thing and finally took those damn belts off the Looney Tunes. The boring ass Looney Tunes. Good stuff. But we're going to get to that. All right, so the show started off with Jimmy and Solo. So Jimmy and Solo defeats the Street Profits. So it, it started off kind of like etchy because like, well, okay, now Solo's back. He's with Jimmy. Where's Jay? So they're still playing the same old, same old, where's Jay type stuff. No Sammy neither tonight. So just still playing off the same stuff they've been playing off. Like Jay, who doesn't know what's going on, even though it's pretty official at this point. If he ain't hanging around the bloodline like that no more, that means he's think he's with more with Sammy. And as you can see, Jay, Jay will mess with Jimmy, but he ain't messing with no Roman and nothing like that. I mean, it's getting pretty, pretty obvious. So all of this hiding and trying to make people wonder, it's like, come on, y'all literally make the scripts go what y'all planned it to think anyway. So... It ain't like y'all really will throw a curveball at us. I doubt it. And then we had a predictable match between the Street Profits and Jimmy and Solo. And predictably, Jimmy and Solo won, right? So it's like, okay, this match is all right, but it's just not really that interesting because it's pretty predictable. And it's like you knew exactly what was going to happen. Brock Lesnar agreed to battle Omos at WrestleMania before hitting MVP with an earth-shattering F5. Same thing with this segment. Boring, goofy, makes no sense. So MVP has Omos, Cedric Benjamin, and uh, Cedric Alexander, and Shelton Benjamin, and you're telling me not a single one of those guys could be out there to protect MVP? So he's just going to come out, drink a drink, and then spit it out like he can't drink and it gets F5 because of that? That's so stupid. As soon as this segment started, I knew it. I knew it. I'm like, MVP is going to get a five. And that's exactly what fucking happened. No Omos. That's why I'm not hyped about Brock versus Omos. Why should you be hyped about the same shit? This is literally going to be Braun Strowman and Omos all over again. Omos is not going to be Brock. Brock is just going to embarrass Omos and make him look bad, just like Braun Strowman did to Omos. Braun Strowman just embarrassed him, made him look bad, made him look like he ain't shit. Omos disappeared for a little while, and now Braun, uh, 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 fuck. <laughs> and now Brock is going to do the same thing. Pretty obvious. And you're making this way all this time just to see Omos get clowned. Okay. Um, I say the only thing that I save Omos is if he get help, which is still makes him look weak. Um, Cody Rhodes defeats Chad Gable. Like I said, I was right about Cody Rhodes. Apparently, I was right. Y'all don't really care about Cody Rhodes like that. So if people are getting bored with Cody Rhodes, do not blame Cody Rhodes. Blame the booking and blame the writing. Because why are y'all putting Cody Rhodes in boring-ass matches? Why would you put Cody Rhodes in a boring-ass match against a chad and obviously cody is gonna win but that making him look weak like here it go where this match was like 10 15 minutes long and i'm not trying to take nothing away from chad i think he's very talented but we know chad in, in the alpha academy at like lower card and we know they don't win no matches we know this it ain't like they actually win matches and actually are booked kind of strong so to have cody go over chad and them it's like yeah man it, that's that's making Cody look terrible. It honestly is. It's making them look terrible, and I and, and it's just not good, man. Even the little storyline that got added in, it's like like Cody was doing so much more under Vince, so much more. Now he's just fighting Chad Gable. Now, see, I was right, man. And not too many people are talking about this, but I, I'm letting it be known. I'm one of the first people to say that it's happening because of the way he's getting booked. And, and they're intentionally making him look bad because that's what the WWE is now. I've been saying this forever, but people don't want to listen. Obviously, it's, it's becoming favoritism. It's becoming a certain amount of little group of people getting looking good and a large amount of people looking bad. 
See, Cody Rose is just a little tricky because he won Royal Rumble. But like I said, he came in number 30, won it all easy. So that is, does that make Cody Rose look real good when they book Rhea to win it from the start? And look at Rhea. From what I'm starting to look at, it looks like they care more about Rhea than Charlotte. Pay attention to what's really going on. What's Charlotte been doing since she's been coming back? Nothing. Fighting Sonya. You see what I'm saying? What y'all really doing with Charlotte? But Rhea, she, she's all hyped up. She's on both shows. You know, pay attention to the people that be on both shows. Those be the people they really care about. Like Cody. Cody barely even been to SmackDown. And, yeah, he's talking about going this Friday. But we'll see. We'll see how that crowd reacts. And we'll see what they actually do. But, yeah, this this isn't good for Cody. Oscar defeats Carmella. So, another predictable, pretty much squash match. Predictable as hell. And they've been building Asuka up with these squash matches lately just to make her look good. But nothing with Bianca. But now they're having Bianca fight Carmella next week. So that's lame. Now Bianca fights who Asuka beat. What, huh? And and honestly, this Asuka-Bianca beat makes me cringe. I feel like both of them should be good. That's why y'all switched Asuka up the way y'all did. Cause to make it, so y'all had an excuse to put her against Bianca. Because y'all know damn well if she was the same Asuka as before, it would really seem weird. Because it's like they're both like face. So, But now you done switched her little makeup, cut her hair, make her act more crazy. So now you think it's okay to her to fight her. And here it go again where Bianca got to fight these crazy people like Alexa acting all crazy and shit now here go oscar acting all crazy and stuff like this is what y'all keep doing this wasn't the i mean this is predictable everything is predictable you know carmella's gonna lose this is the only match that had a slight change but but it, but it's a reason why Candice LeRae defeats Piper and Vivian. Now, the only reason why Candice won is because, shit, they're literally running the same match back last week. They literally ran the same match. So instead of having Piper win again, let's have Nikki Cross come in and interfere so she could lose so we could keep this feud going. You know, all right. But, you know, didn't have her win clean, though. Now, if you really wanted to do something for Candace, have her win clean. But you didn't do that. You made Nikki win, which means it's still all about Piper. This was just a little fantasy win for Candace because obviously they didn't have nothing else to do if you booked the same match two weeks in a row. And now let's we'll just throw Nikki in there. Candace loses real quick. I mean, wins. But now, but next week, it'll be Candace to be back losing again. She'll be back losing again. She got attacked backstage, too, by Piper. do 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 drop. Yeah, that was funny, too. Uh, Judgment Day had a whole segment talking about their beefs and their future, but Damian Priest was not involved. Damn, that was fucked up. Dominic had a spot. Rhea had a spot. Even Finn Balor had a spot. Damian Priest had nothing. I'm sitting there waiting too. I'm I'm waiting to see like, man, is Damian they gonna have something for him? No, he just sat there laughing like, what the hell? Like, huh, huh, huh. I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. Um. Let me see. Despite the news that The Miz will host WrestleMania, Seth Frickin' Rollins took out the A-lister and used his phone to call Logan Paul and invite him to Raw next week. So, more embarrassment for The Miz. Yeah, they had a little short segment, too, with Theory. Not much with Theory today. They, I mean, here it go. Barely did anything with Theory today, but Seth Rollins gets all the attention. Hmm. 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 And here we go again. Miz is getting attacked and beat up and embarrassed again. This same shit happened last week and weeks before. And guess what? Miz is a beat. I mean, Seth is a beating him up again and then curve stomping him again. This is what I'm saying, man. This is this is what I'm talking about, man. When it comes to wrestling, man, I, it's boys. This shit is just almost too obvious. But, um, yeah, and then Seth ended up picking up the phone, Miz's phone, calling Logan Paul. So, again, they care more about Seth Rollins and Logan Paul than Cody Rhodes. Um, And now he's asking him to come. So now it might be like some Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins stuff. So here we go where Logan Paul gets treated better than a lot of people on the roster. Logan Paul. Okay. 
Wow. Um, and what's up with the men's hosting that? Bobby Lashley defeats Elias. Predictable as hell. Same old shit. Elias loses all the fucking time. And nobody wants to see Brock versus Bray. It's literally going to be some magical bullshit where Bray Bray is going to win. Come on. This is just too damn easy. This is too predictable and easy. I mean, come on now. Johnny G defeats Otis and Maximum Male Models Interference. Oh, and here you go with this. Otis had a match to prove himself with the models. Clearly build a storyline. No, we're still going to put Johnny G over them. And we're going to make uh, Dexter Loomis play Johnny G's lackey. Why the fuck is John- Dexter Loomis Johnny G's lackey? That makes no sense at all. And Johnny G wins over Otis. So Chad Gable has a tough time. Uh, I mean, Cody Rose has a tough time with Chad. But here goes Johnny G fucking beating Otis in two seconds. How much sense does that make? If that doesn't show you that more certain people got favoritism and certain people don't, then I don't know what to tell you guys. Obviously, Johnny G is even like more than Cody Rose. And the models, come on, they've been getting trashed on, played for the longest. Come on, you see what they how they did L.A. Knight and made them do them. And hey, come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, let's get to this end, man, because this was not a good episode. The only good thing that happened was the end. Becky Lynch and Lita defeated Damage Control to capture the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. Now, this was the best thing that happened in the show because I know it's a lot of people out here that are tired of this title run with damage control they're not doing anything they haven't been building any strong feuds or matches all they're doing is playing off each other with bailey not really a strong team come on man it's it's bull had those belts way too long won them from oscar and alexa within like a few days after they won them from y'all which was bogus i didn't that was if that wasn't messed up i don't know what was come on Looney Tunes going over Oscar and Alexa and never giving them a chance to get the belts back. Come on, man. You know they should be able to beat them. So we're just going to beat them, screw them out the titles, and never give them a chance and let them hold them belts and just throw them in a whole bunch of singles matches and stuff so they can hold the belts as long as possible. Finally, 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 Becky Lynch has come out with the help of Trish Stratus, so that's good. Shut Bailey down. Had Trish came out. I mean, the crowd popped, man. The crowd was popping. Uh, the crowd is definitely into these three, and I'm into them as well. I'd rather watch them over the damage control any day of the week. Uh, their title run probably is going to be a lot more interesting. I just hope that this doesn't be a short title run. I hope. I hope it's actually a little long. Like, man, let them go maybe to WrestleMania and build some stuff up, you know. Let's do something with them, man. Because damage control, y'all got some work to do, man. Straight up. And Bailey, I don't know what they going to do with you, Bailey. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Mm. But here's y'all review. I hope y'all enjoy it, man. Um, I'm definitely going to be back with some more content, talk about some other stuff when I figure some things out, get some little time. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. Please hit that like button, comment if you like, subscribe, and let me know what you think about it, man. And, uh, yeah, I'll rate this show. I'll say two out of two out of five man and the only reason it didn't get like a one or a 1.5 is because of the main event even the main event was rushed i mean and when you and that's funny too this is like the best thing that y'all did but notice that the main event was rushed and they really didn't make it last long while some of these other matches took on forever and they were pointless as hell and this was your main event and y'all just rushed it why? Because y'all really don't want them to have the titles like that? I don't know. But we'll see what's up in the future. And I hope y'all guys enjoy this. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.